Hello guys, today we want to make a quick video about the native support from OpenPLC to the Arduino platform. So from now on you can upload code from the PLC editor directly to the Arduino device. Please keep in mind that it's still in beta right now. And I will make a short video about it, how to do it yourself, so you can run code like this on an Arduino device. And I will make an in-depth tutorial when the official version is released. To get started, you go to the OpenPLC forum and download the latest beta version of OpenPLC from this post from Tiago Alvarez. A big shout out for Tiago and the Arduino guys to make this happen. When it's done downloading, you unzip the folder and install OpenPLC Editor. For this project, you will need an Arduino Uno a breadboard, some LEDs and resistors, and some jumper wires. This is the schematic I used to build it. So, first of all, you extract the files, because it's a zip file. After that it's done unzipping, you can open OpenPLC Editor. Please keep in mind it's a beta version. So you open the OpenPLC Editor file and then you open the OpenPLC Editor .bat file. And OpenPLC will open. And now we will create a new file. We will call it uh, traffic light. Open PLC files are saved in empty folders. So first you have to create a new folder. I will call this traffic light for YouTube. We select it. And now we're gonna name our program traffic light. And the language we will be using is function block diagram. We first start with adding the variables. So here you have the mapping of uh, OpenPLC with Arduino. We'll create three variables. We have three outputs. OLED red, OLED orange and OLED green. And they are all of the type of bool. So it's either one or zero. For location you have to set the percentage and then the address. In this case, it's address 0.0. .0. And we will do this for all the three uh, outputs. After we declare the variables, we will start programming. With working with OpenPLC I found out that in the first cycle all outputs are momentarily one cycle high, so just a millisecond, and then they go directly to low. The transaction from high to low is a negative edge, if you see it in the diagram, and we will use this negative edge to start a timer, a timer of delay, and what this does is you have this signal from the F trigger block. It's uh, a one when there is a falling edge. 
and we will de delay the signal for six seconds. So the output of the uh, timer off block will stay high for six seconds. So the falling edge is just uh, one cycle, maybe two milliseconds, but the signal will be delayed for six seconds of the top block. So it will be high for six seconds. So first of all, the red LED will work. I will input some comments to make my code readable if I want to read it after all. It's a good practice, especially in a production environment. So we'll call this network the activation of the red LED. And we'll copy it for the next network and I will change some uh, values to make it work for the orange LED. So the orange LED will be triggered from the green LED. So when it's green and the green light goes out, you have also a negative edge. And then we will uh, set the orange light for three seconds. So we'll use a top uh, timer off delay of three seconds to activate the orange light. And we'll copy, copy the code one more time to create the code to activate the green LED. So we'll change the green LED will be triggered by the LED LED. So, so when the red light goes out, it will also have a negative edge and this negative edge will trigger a signal for the TOF timer and the TOF timer will create a signal for six seconds from a green LED. Now we will run our code in simulation by pressing on the running man above. We wait a while and then we press on the glasses uh, next to the instance we want to see. And now we can see the code running in simulation. You can see it works fine. So if an LED goes out, it will trigger the next LED to go on and the timer off delays. Um, define the time the LEDs will be on. So after that, we will stop the simulation by pressing the stop button and we will close the instance and upload the code to the Arduino. So then this window will prompt up. You select the right COM port and you press upload. This will take a while, so we skip ahead. And after generating the binary file, it will start uploading to the Arduino and you will see the LEDs blinking and the code starts running. So as you can see, this code works fine. You can also try your own code in another language, maybe a sequencer. And if you have any suggestions for our next video, please let me know in the comments below. Until next time.